What's up, Headliner Nation? Kyle coming to you from the Draft.com studios with the first waiver wire episode of the 2019 season for the Fantasy Headliners. Really stoked to be putting out in-season content finally. We've spent all off-season long preparing for this week to finally start submitting rosters, and we're going to have a ton of in-season content planned all season long. To give you just a quick rundown of what you can expect from the Fantasy Headliners this year on Mondays, this episode will be dropping every Monday morning, the waiver wire episode to get you ready to put in your waiver claims for the week. On Tuesdays, Jake is going to handle the running back and wide receiver start sit videos. I'm going to be doing quarterback and tight end start sit videos that come out on Wednesday. And then really excited for this year, up to three live shows potentially per week. Now, the main live show, if you remember last year, we had the main live show. Jake did one on this channel every Saturday Saturday night. We're going to continue with that. The Fantasy Headliners Live, Jake and myself, Saturday evening to handle your start-sit questions, talk about the matchups on Sunday, and break everything down for you. But also on Thursday and Sunday, we're looking at doing some live shows as well. That's going to be schedule pending. If we have enough time, either Jake or myself will be hopping on for a little bit on Thursdays and Sundays to help you out with as many questions as possible. And then continue our partnership with Draft. We're going to be doing some in-season content for them as well. Those videos will drop on Friday. So you're still going to be getting anywhere from five to seven new shows a week here from the Fantasy Headliners. So really excited to be putting out all of that content but without further ado we need to get going we got to talk about who you might be taking a shot at on the waiver wire before week one kicks off let's jump into that now all right the first name to talk about Devin Singletary he's been a hot name since LaShawn McCoy was released by the Buffalo Bills and with Devin Singletary I want to caution everybody that plans on trying to add him I think he's the running back to add in Buffalo right now however you're going to have to wait on him. I don't think Devin Singletary really gives you the type of fantasy football uh, output that you need to have him in your starting lineup for several weeks. This is going to be a committee that's going to split a lot of touches. However, towards the middle of the season, maybe towards the end of the season, that is when I think Devin Singletary and his talent starts to win out, and he starts to get more and more work. Now, if you're in like a PPR league, Devin Singletary is 31.1% owned. A lot of owners have probably already jumped on him this weekend if they had the opportunity to do, do so. However, if you're in a PPR league and you're in a deeper league, or maybe Devin Singletary is already owned and you need help at running back, Take a shot at TJ Yeldon. He's probably going to have a lot of the passing down work to begin the season. If you're in a standard league, and again, Devin Singletary is already owned, or you're in a deeper league, then take a shot at Frank Gore. With all three of those guys, it's going to be difficult to get really solid fantasy output from them any single week for the time being. However, if you want to take a shot at at least one of those individuals, Devin Singletary first, and then TJ Yeldon and PPR Frank Gore and Standard. It gives you a little bit of a piece of the buffalo pie, and maybe one of them breaks out, and you're the lucky holder of that guy later in the season. All right, next up for the Baltimore Ravens, running back Justice Hill. And this is a guy that Jake and I loved. Again, last couple of seasons, Jake and I have had the ability to go to the combine and watch a lot of these guys in person, and we were blown away by Justice Hill. I mean, when we sat there and they started to run the 40-yard dashes, Jake leaned over and he said, Kyle, who's going to have the fastest time? I said Justice Hill. So I was pretty pumped about how he performed that day. Jake and I both like him a lot and think long-term he's the Baltimore running back to own. We also both like Mark Ingram, though. So with running back Justice Hill at only 16.7% owned, the, the not really release of Kenneth Dixon, but Kenneth Dixon to the IR this weekend firmly cements him as the pass-catching back and back up to Mark Ingram. Now, I want to caution everybody on this. Again, PPR leagues is where you're going to take a shot at Justice Hill. In half PPR leagues, I'm not going to use a high waiver wire priority on him right now. I think he's in for a very good season, though. It might just take a couple of weeks for things to get rolling in that direction. During the preseason, he only had 114 yards on 31 touches, so he didn't really show that explosive ability um, that he has and can offer to this offense. 
But one thing I just want to keep in mind with Lamar Jackson, I do like Lamar Jackson a lot. I think he's going to be a very good NFL quarterback. He still needs to continue to grow, though. So at any point in time, if he's having issues with his accuracy or he's being inconsistent on the field, this is a point where Justice Hill might be able to jump in and really offer a lot of not only output for Lamar Jackson as a safety valve, but output for fantasy owners because he could be getting a lot of looks in the passing game. Now, Mark Ingram being there, I'm not saying Justice Hill is Alvin Kamara in any way, shape, or form. But if the Ravens can use Ingram and Hill kind of similar to the way that the Saints used Ingram and Alvin Kamara, just with a little bit more workload shifted to Mark Ingram, and then you have to account for rushing attempts by Lamar Jackson as well, Justice Hill could be in for a really good PPR season. He could be a guy that by the end of the season offers you running back three type numbers week in and week out. A lot of it will depend on the defense as well. So if the defense is is playing well and the uh, Ravens are in a positive game script, that's going to hurt Justice Hill a little bit. But I think this is a guy that you definitely want to have on your roster. If anything were to happen to Mark Ingram, Justice Hill gains so much value at that point and becomes a lock and loaded wide res- or excuse me, running back two in PPR leagues for me that you want to have him sooner rather than later. So if you have the opportunity to stash him on your bench, do it now, get that done, and then potentially re- reap all the rewards later in the season. All right, we're going to give another shout out to the Buffalo Bills here, and we're going to go with John Brown, wide receiver, only 27.5% owned right now. And don't forget that last season when he, when he was with the Baltimore Ravens, that prior to Joe Flacco going out with his injury and Lamar Jackson stepping in as the full-time starter the rest of the season, John Brown was a low-end wide receiver too. So this was a guy that was consistently giving you the type of numbers that you needed to put in your fantasy lineup every single week. Now, in one of my hot take episodes, I did say that John Brown was going to finish as a wide receiver too with at least 10 touchdowns. He has the big playability, and we know that there's one thing that we can factor in with Josh Allen every single week. It's his ability to throw the deep ball. Now, if he can rein in some of that accuracy, that would be excellent. But last season, John Brown finished with 17 yards per reception. That was tied for fourth highest in the NFL. And then another stat that I found interesting about uh, about John Brown, that he was one of only two players in 2018 with more than 15 yards per reception and under eight yards per target. So his yards per target really, really, really started to go down at the end of the season because he was getting a decent amount of targets. They just weren't turning into anything because of the inconsistency from Lamar Jackson. So if that can pick up, if Josh Allen can become consistent this year and get the ball to him on a regular basis, he's at least going to be a wide receiver three with touchdown upside every single week. And he's going to have some wide receiver upside as well, wide receiver two upside as well. And only 27.5% owned. You're going to be able to grab him pretty cheap on your waiver wire this week. If you need the depth at wide receiver and you're lacking some big playability, John Brown could be the guy for you this season. Well, we've talked about the wide receiver core out in San Francisco a lot this season. But when we've talked about it, it's been Dante Pettis. And then a couple of weeks ago, it was Jalen Hurd. Well, let's focus our attention to Marquise Goodwin for a little bit. Only 4.6% owned. So this is a guy that you probably don't even need to put a waiver claim in for. You'll be able to grab him up pretty easily and not even use a waiver wire claim. However, Dante Pettis, who we thought for sure was going to be the wide receiver one in San Francisco. I was one of those people. I like Pettis a lot. He'll probably end up being just fine. For the time being, though, there's been some concerns because Kyle Shanahan has been nudging at Dante Pettis saying, come get this job. We want you to earn it. So is there really some issues there or are they just giving him some extra motivation? Keep in mind that Marquise Goodwin was there when Jimmy Garoppolo took over for the final six games of 2017. And they had a pretty decent connection at that time. 49 targets, 33 receptions, 462 yards over the last six games of the season. Three of those games, two of them were over 100 yards and one was 99 yards. So three of his final six games almost were over 100 yards. So is that type of connection still there with Jimmy Garoppolo? Potentially, yes. And again, this is a guy that you can basically get for free. So if you've had any injuries already or if there's been some guys cut that you were stashing, hoping to hold on to, if you're in a deeper league, if you play a lot of uh, positions on your roster... 
Go with Marquise Goodwin. Good one. I know Debo Samuel is playing pretty well right now, but again, he's a rookie, and a lot of times rookie wide receivers take some time to get adjusted. Marquise Goodwin has, just like John Brown, a lot of that big play upside. He could return some of that value for you right away. Now, we're not going to pick him up and start him week one, I would say. However, if that continues to be, or if there's continues to be a connection with Jimmy Garoppolo that carries over from 2017 to this season, and Marquise Goodwin stays healthy, then again, big play upside on a week that you might need uh, an injury fill in, a bye week, whatever it may be. And then Goodwin becomes a much larger owned asset than 4.6% that we're currently seeing. My tight end to own this week, Darren Waller from the Oakland Raiders, only 14.6% owned. And Headliner Nation, if you purchased our draft guide, which many of you did this season, and thank you for that, appreciate the support, a lot of great feedback on that. But if you purchase the draft guide, I give you a breakdown of Darren Waller months ago. So when the draft guide first released more than a couple of months ago at this point, Darren Waller was in there as a sleeper for the season. So a lot of you might already know Darren Waller and have him on your radar, potentially have him on your roster. However, if you're new to the channel or if you've only been around a certain amount of time or haven't bought the draft guide, maybe Darren Waller doesn't ring a bell in your head, and that is absolutely fine. Let's not let that happen going forward, though. If you're in a two tight end league or like a tight end premium type league, Darren Waller is a guy that I would definitely add. Now, I'm not a guy for having multiple tight ends on my roster. However, I would make an exception to pick up Darren Waller and hold him for a little bit. Jared Cook had a fabulous season for Oakland last year, and I'm not going to compare Waller to Cook. However, keep in mind that Derek Carr relied on Jared Cook a lot last season. Now, he didn't have any weapons, and now he has Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams, so he has more weapons. I get that, but if it's muscle memory for Derek Carr, and maybe the offensive line isn't you know playing that well, maybe he's needing to give the ball away a little bit quicker, that's not going to give him the time that he needs to develop that chemistry with those two guys on the outside. So maybe he's got to move a little bit quicker, and maybe Darren Waller is going to be the guy that he really relies on to begin the season until he builds that chemistry with Antonio Brown and Williams. So, again, there could be a lot of value there. Darren Waller is a receiving tight end. He's very athletic. He's a guy that can make yards happen after the play. I highly encourage you to grab him now, though, because if he goes off and has any big games, you're not going to be able to grab him anymore because of the... The amount of fantasy owners who are wanting to make sure they're set at tight end after the disaster that was last season, anybody that pops off to begin the season, owners are going to go grab him right away to make sure that they have the next big guy. All right, so those are my main pickups for this week, and we've got a few honorable mentions as well. Ty Montgomery, only 6.2% uh, owned for the New York Jets. There's been some talk that him and Le'Veon Bell are going to split a lot of the work to begin the season while Le'Veon Bell works his way back into game form. If that happens, Ty Montgomery could see a large amount of work in the passing game. If the Jets are behind for any reason to start the year, then Ty Montgomery becomes more useful at that point. He's had a good preseason. Keep them on your radar, especially Le'Veon Bell owners. Justin Jackson, only 22.7% owned at this point, which shocks me a little bit because Austin Eckler, everyone's been all over him. But this is going to be, in my opinion, a 50-50 split. And we heard just, I recorded this I recorded this on Sunday. So we're hearing today at this point that Melvin Gordon has been given basically an ultimatum by the San Diego Chargers. Either play at the $5.6 million salary that we have for you or don't play at all this season. If he decides to hold out this season and he's done with it, Justin Jackson's going to be a guy that you would really want to have on your roster, especially Melvin Gordon owners. Austin Eckler's going to do a lot of work in the passing game, but do not count out Justin Jackson to offer you fantasy upside at some point this year. Kenny Stills to Houston, he's an interesting option. I think Will Fuller would have to have another injury for Stills really to find that fantasy output. But one thing I like about Stills is they can move him inside or outside. So he can play the slot, he can play outside, he can go whichever way. We know Kiki QT has had some injury issues, so Kenny Stills could start in the slot to begin the year. He is a big play threat. And if there's one thing we've seen about Deshaun Watson, they can make that big play happen. But just imagine a Houston Texans offense running DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, Kiki QT, Kenny Stills, and Duke Johnson out onto the field every single play. Who in the heck are you going to stop? It's going to be very difficult. So Kenny Stills, only 48.1% owned, almost at that 50% benchmark that we like to keep for this waiver wire show. He's not going to be available very much longer. 
Albert Wilson at 22.1% owned uh, in only seven games last year, four touchdowns, average 15, uh, 15 yards per reception. This Dolphins team is going to be awful this year. Sorry, Dolphins fans, you know it, but you have a bright future, a lot of picks, a lot of cap room to work with. But this year, it's going to be bad. You've got Ryan Fitzmagic there that can make some deep throws for you. Albert Wilson is a guy that could get a lot of garbage time reps for you. And then tight end Mark Andrews, 43.6% owned. I do not know how this guy is not uh, at a higher ownership percentage right now. For me, he's a tight end one this season. Probably going to finish towards the back half of tight end ones. Again, just because Lamar Jackson can be a little inconsistent at times. But we need to get him scooped off the waiver wire sooner rather than later. All right, Headliner Nation, there you go. The first waiver wire episode of the year. Hopefully I made it short and sweet for you. A lot of information. That's what we're going to do in season. These episodes are going to have a ton of information, but we're going to move quickly so you get your information. You can get over to your lineup. You can put in your waiver wire claims, set your waivers, or set your lineups, whatever you need to do. But keep in mind, don't forget that we are going to be putting out a ton of content this season. Right there, you have it again. Just to remind you, waiver wires on Mondays, start and sit shows on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, up to three live shows a week, potentially, depending on our schedules. But lock in that Saturday night, the Fantasy Headliners Live. Every Saturday night, we will be here answering your questions. Jake and I are really pumped for that show. Headliner Nation, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Hit that like button for me if you enjoyed the content. More importantly, though, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Become a part of Headliner Nation today. And if you do, let us know in the comments below so I can personally welcome you to Headliner Nation and this awesome community that we have. I looked off to the right for some reason. They're not out there. It's just me here in the studio. But anyway, make sure that uh, if you're a part of Headliner Nation and you see somebody say that they have subscribed, welcome them to this awesome community as well. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Good luck, everyone, this week. We'll catch you on the next show.